Yo guys, so me and Stringflow and other Pokemon runners were getting a lot of questions about how Flow Timer works and what it is and the different settings and stuff that you can do with it. So I thought I would make a little video explaining that and uh, why you should use Flow Timer if you're doing Pokemon runs. Uh, if you're familiar with Eon Timer, it works basically the same way. It is a tool to help you hit a specific frame window for uh, mainly for different Pokemon manips. So uh, this is the the default that everything's going to be set to. When you load up Flow Timer, you can add more offsets and delete them like like that. Uh, so this number right here is the number that you're going to be wanting to mess with the most. It's the number in milliseconds of how long it's going to take before the timer counts down. So for example, if I'd used an offset of 5,000, then that is 5,000 milliseconds. And you press start, let it count down, four, five, and you hit it on the button that you're trying to hit on the fifth beep, or if you're using the visual cue like I do, the, the fifth flash. Uh, you can change this lower or higher depending on the results that you get. If you're hitting late, then you want to lower this number. And if you're hitting early, then you want to increase this number. Uh, if you're running Gen 1, 2, or 3, then if you want to increase the timer by one frame, then you're going to want to add 16 to this number. That's that's about one frame, uh, 30, 32 for two frames, etc. cetera. Uh, I usually try to adjust it by like half a frame at a time, but you can find what works for you. <clears throat> you can also change how much time there is in between the beeps. I don't really find much, much success with changing that, so I wouldn't really mess with it. But something that you might want to look at changing is the number of, of beeps that there are. So you could set it to three beeps. It'll start later, but there will be less beeps. Like that. So find what works for you. I usually use five, but for, for some minips, I'll use three. Uh, and then you can easily set this to a different timer. So let's say this is a uh, Kyogre minip and you, you know, change the settings for this one. You want to use three beeps for this one. You're more comfortable with doing that later in a run. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, you just need to find what works for you. So uh, you can... I guess I'll get into that when I uh, talk about the settings here. So if we go to the settings tab, uh, I guess I need to make a uh, window capture for that as well. Then you can change a couple of settings. Uh, you can change your key bind for, for certain stuff. Uh, the start, the timer, the stop, the timer. I don't ever use that one. Uh, and then the up and down keys, you can change the sound to other stuff depending on you know on what you like uh i went with ping one i think it's the best one but it doesn't really matter uh you can turn on and off the visual cue here uh some people don't like it most people don't like it from what i understand but i do use it um and then you want to have these on as well the global start and up and down which means that you don't actually have to have the the window as the active window to use the key binds to control the timer which is definitely what you want uh, and you can also increase the number of milliseconds that the visual cue actually flashes for. Uh, I did alter this one a little bit. I increased it, but, you know, most people don't use it, so it probably doesn't matter. So one other thing that for for some minips that you're going to want is, m like, multiple offsets for the same minip. And in order to do that, you just add a forward slash and then type a second number behind it so uh, now I have a flow timer offset that will beep at 6,000 milliseconds and 10,000 milliseconds so I show you how that looks and this is really important for uh, several minutes including uh, catch manips in Gen 3, no encounter manip in Gen 3. Uh, you could even use it for stuff like extended in red, but I don't recommend doing that. 
so yeah, you just need to put a forward slash. And you can actually do another forward slash behind that one to do a third or even fourth offset for, for various things. Uh, and then there is one more function of flow timer, which is the variable offset, which I've only used for fire red so far. And what's different about the fire red manip is that you don't know which frame you need to hit when you start this timer. It changes every run because the list of squirtles that you can get in the frame that they exist on changes each run. So you need to enter this frame after you've already synchronized your timer. So first of all, something that through my fire red grind, I didn't actually notice until pseudo pointed that out to me is that I actually had this FPS set wrong because it's defaulted to 60, but you actually want it set to this number. This is the correct FPS. I was getting some wonky results for the, for the later frames, which was pretty silly considering I got the record in that game. But, um, the basic premise of this is that you're going to start the timer when you name your character and then you'll see your trainer ID later, which will tell you which squirtles you can hit. And then, uh, once this timer has been running for a while, you need to input the frame that you want to hit. So it's important to note that this number is in frames, not milliseconds. And if you're using the gen three predictor, it will give you the number in frames as well. So you don't really need to worry about that. Um, so for example, I would start the timer and then I would enter my offset and press submit. And then it will beep when I have set that frame to, even though the timer was already running. Um, for this, uh, this is the, this number, the offset, this is in milliseconds. Um, so this is the number you want to mess with if you're hitting, you know, early or late on your minips the same way that you would with uh, the offset here and the interval and beeps are the same as, uh, as these settings here. So that's pretty much it for, for flow timer. You can mess with the settings yourself and try to get used to it and stuff. Okay. So now the last thing that you need to know is how to actually get flow timer. Um, I will put the links to these two things in the description, uh, but this is what the website is going to look like for flow timer when you actually click on the first link. And this is how you download it. You just go here and you want to click on uh, whatever the newest version is. It might not be 1.6 by the time you watch this video, uh, but download the latest version and choose the flow timer that matches your operating system. And then you are going to want to make sure that you uninstall any Java version that you currently have. If you don't have one, then it's fine. Uh, and then you're going to want to download this, uh, Java 10 point, whatever that will also be in the description below the video. Uh, and that's all you need is those two things. And it should open very easily and you can do everything that I've done in this video after that. So hopefully this was helpful and can help you hit minips more consistently with your runs. Uh, if you have questions about this still, which you shouldn't, then you can ask in the comments below the video or come in my stream or uh, whatever it is that you need to do to get your minips working too. So thanks for watching and I hope this was helpful.